Nutrition, nutrition Promoting good nutrition Jepa Oma, he he be good What I'm trying to say is Today we are setting up a garden around this shake. Here we have to consider available space, water, sun, wind, as well as security, which is very important in this step. This is the right place because it gets morning sun and shade in the afternoon. The bush is protecting it against the wind and it's close to the house. This makes it easier to water it regularly and protects against fish and animals in the community. However, it is a bit steep, so we have to do some leveling. Once you find the right spot, you think about the ideal size of your vegetable bed. Uh, which can be uh, between um, 60 to 70 centimeters and this we call it a single reach bed which means you can be able to reach a different uh, you know corners and points of your vegetable bed now that we have you know um, marked or demarcated the board the borders of our vegetable beds it's important that you consider the space between the vegetable beds or your vegetable beds so the ideal way of uh, uh, marking this, the space between your vegetable bed, is to make sure that you sit um, this way. So that you should be able to work uh, in the bed uh, in front of you without stepping into the other bed behind. So it's also very important in gardening that you need the right tools. So you need the right tools to loosen the soil, but it doesn't have to be fancy tools. You can find uh, available materials to make your own tools. Loosening the soil. Any tools you have at hand can be used for gardening. Making sure we have fertile ground, the deeper, the better. Investing here will pay out well later. Often times you may also have to remove some rocks. Don't worry. We will use them later. About an arm's length deep gives you about 40 cm of nicely loosened soil. Because it's a bit steep, we also have to keep in mind some leveling. After we have re loosened the soil and removed stones, we can now use the same stones to create the border of the bed. So as we can see the land is sloping that way downward the water will flow this this way so it's that's why we put stones here so that the the small stones so that they they can reduce the speed of water and encourage water infiltration leveling the bed it's very important so that the water stays inside the bed now we are going to water the bed to check the level of our bed so that uh, the water does not run on one side. We can do this using the watering can like this one With the bottle, it's good that your holes are on top Then you can use it this way As we water the bed, we can see how level our bed is you can see the water gathered at one corner. This means we still need to do more leveling. Watering also prepares the ground for our seeds to come. It is then time to make the ground more fertile by sprinkling some compost or manure on top of your vegetable bed. The next step now is to think of what vegetable you want to plant in your garden. Vegetable seeds that we are going to grow in these beds are tomatoes, spinach, onion, kale, carrots, green peppers, and beetroot. We are going to make different rows where we are going to plant them. It's good to use more than one vegetable in your garden. Plant onions or garlic all around the outside of your bed to naturally protect your plants against pests. Plant the smaller vegetables on the outside and those that will grow tall in the middle of your 
garden. Make sure there is enough space in between your seeds for your vegetable to grow well. The next step now is called mulching, a simple technique where you use easily available natural materials such as dry grass to cover the soil. This will help to keep the water in the soil and will protect your plants from too much sun. Just keep the layer of mulch thin until your seeds have germinated. Once you have done uh, planting your vegetable and also mulching the bed, you can make use of the thorns that you can cut from the thorn trees to protect the beds from birds, dogs and chickens in the community so that they cannot disturb your bed. And you can lay them in the bed like this. A thin layer of thorns that covers the whole garden is enough. Your work is almost done. Just some final watering again. Remember to use a soft watering method so the water sprinkles gently and evenly on the ground like the rainfall. Do your best to be ahead of your game. It's for you and your kids. Nutrition, nutrition. Nutrition, nutrition, nutrition. nutrition.